Now for today's project, we're going to install a motion sensing light switch. I picked this one up on Amazon. I'll put a link for it down in the description. So it's very simple. Well, yeah, it's still simple to do. Everything comes with the switch. You know, open it up in here. You see we have our pack of wire nuts for securing the wires. The switch itself and nice protective bubble wrap. It's very nice of them. And then the back, the face plate to cover the switch or well, around the switch. And of course our instructions are in here also. This is very important. Make sure we take the time to go through the instructions because it's gonna have important information on there. Although these switches are similar, not they are not exactly the same. Wiring is basically the same. What changes are the instructions for setting up your motion and your timer and the different types of settings for the switch. So before we even install the switch, let's go through the wiring real quick. All of these switches I've seen come with wires attached. There's never screws on the side, I always see the wires. We have our ground wire, our neutral wire, our wire that feeds the hot to the switch, and our wire that feeds the hot from the switch up to the light. Using a color coding, red is your switch. Now these two wires are already in the box, the black and the red. Well, it won't be that color, but we know those two wires are there. We have hot coming down and hot going up. Ground wire, we're not worried about running here because we're working off a conduit. So we ground off the box. Then our white neutral wire is actually wire we will have to run. Because there's only a switch out, a switch box here and conduit, there's only going to be two wires in there and they both should be black. So we have to route a new white wire, neutral wire, from the main bundle up in the fixture down to here because this needs its own neutral. Now we have our wires figured out. There's one more step I want to take care of before I install this. Just because it's easier to do this here than when it's up in the wall. So what I'm going to do is pop the switch plate cover off here. There we go. Now I'm going to take my little screwdriver. I'm going to go ahead and adjust the settings. Now this switch has three settings. You switch it to off. It works like a regular switch. Push it to turn on, push it to turn off. You put it in the middle on occupancy, it will turn on with motion, and as long as there's motion going on inside that room, it'll stay on. Once it stops sensing motion, it'll turn off at the timer. Other one is vacant. So as it doesn't turn on with motion, it only turns on when you press the switch. And as long as it senses motion inside that room, it'll stay on, then when the motion goes away, it'll cut off. So first thing I'm gonna say is our timer, I always set it the shortest amount of time because I want the switch to turn off as soon as possible to save myself some energy. And I set my range for my motion. I always turn the range all the way up to make it as sensitive as possible because I kind of want it to come on as I'm coming to the doorway since this is in a hallway. And that way this hallway will come on and be lit up as I'm walking into it. And again, I want it to turn off as soon as motion is over. The main reason I'm doing this is because I hate having to turn that hallway switch on. Then if I'm going to the other side of the hallway, I don't need it on anymore. So I'm not planning on walking all the way back, turning the switch off and walking back through a dark hallway. This way the hallway will be lit up as I'm passing through it and then it will cut off. Now we got that together, let's get our tools together. So the tools needed for this project are the little mini screwdrivers like you saw me just use for the switch. We're going to need our wire strippers to pull the insulation off the wire. We're going to use our lime pliers to help cut the wire and also tighten the wire as we twist it together. Then use our needle nose pliers to uh, help wrap the wire around for our ground and also get wires off the switch. We go on to our work light because we're cutting power off. Our impact driver and bits, I just like using impact driver because it's faster. You can always get away for just a regular screwdriver and bits or just regular screwdrivers, but I like the bits for get different screw heads. Electrical tape, of course. Fish tape to pull the wire through the conduit from the switch to the fixture. Of course, wire. Since it's just a light, you can use 14 gauge wire. You want to make sure it's white so you stay with the color code. And of course, our trusty electrical tester so we don't kill ourselves. All right, let's get to work. So the first thing we're going to do is get our old switch off the wall. Now, I actually leave the power on while I'm doing this. I have more than enough light to work with. If you're not comfortable with that, go ahead and hit your breaker now and turn the power off. But it's just two screws holding this plate on. Then it might be a little paint holding it on also. We'll get that off. And then we'll go ahead and get our switch unscrewed from the box. Now it should be two Phillips head screws holding this on. This is a newer one, so it's gonna be Phillips. If it was an older switch, it'd be flathead. But we'll go ahead and grab a bit, get these two screws out, 
and then we can pull this switch loose in the wall. We just want to get this out and open so we'll be able to you know, run our fish tape. So now we have that loose, let's go up top and get the ceiling, the light fixture off also. Hopefully yours are labeled. So this one I actually decided to just go ahead and do a power real quick. Just because I'm about to take down the light fixture, it's usually more screw, I mean more wires and more things going on up there. You'll see once we get this fixture down. So the holes the glass globe on is usually just gonna be like two or three hand tight like screws. You can take it loose with your fingers. You don't need a screwdriver or a special tool for this. Once we get this down, there should be two screws holding the light fixture up. Now you don't need to completely unscrew these screws. You can get away by just loosening them and then turning the light fixture. That's how it usually happens. So I'm going to put my long Phillips bit onto my impact driver here. Only because, you know, I like using an impact driver for speed. And I'm going to go ahead and get these two screws down. Well, at least one screw. The other screw doesn't look very tight. So I'll get this one loosened up. Yeah, that one's not real tight. We just rotate, pull down, and there we have all our wires. Now we have access to that. We have holes open, we can start running our fish tape from the light switch up to the light fixture so we have something to pull the wire back with. So here we're going to take our fish tape and feed it through the electrical box that the light switch is hanging down from. I use the nylon fish tape one because I have a nylon fish tape. If you don't have a nylon fish tape, regular fish tape is fine, a steel one is fine. It's just not as smooth and it doesn't run as quickly through multiple bins as a nylon fish tape will. And since I know I'm going up, then make it 90 degree to the ceiling, then make it another 90 degree over to the, the fixture itself, that's two hard turns. And I'd rather use my nylon fish tape. So I'm going to keep pushing up till I get some resistance. When I get that resistance, if you look up at the light fixture in the ceiling, you should see the wires start to move. That means I'm most likely hitting the wires right at the junction of the electrical box. See it shaking right there. So if you have a second person, they can actually be up there right now to pull the fish tape through by hand. But since I'm by myself, I have to put the fish tape on the floor, climb up the ladder here real quick, and see if I can find the end of that fish tape. What we're gonna do is just take our finger and slide it over just a little bit, just so the end of it will get past the cap of the conduit. Then we'll go back down, push it through, and you should see it stick. Here it comes coming out of the conduit now. So now that it's through there, we're good. All we're gonna do now is just pull this down by hand, attach our wire to it, and pull it back through. I mean, it is easier with two people, but good thing I'm tall enough I didn't have to go back on the ladder. I could just reach up there and pull it down. So now I'm gonna take my wire and put it through the end of the fish tape, fold it over so it stays connected. I'm gonna grab my lineman pliers here and actually pinch the wire down on there to make sure it doesn't come off. Then I'll grab some electrical tape, and again, better secure it. The worst thing that can happen is we get this thing halfway between a light fixture and the, and the wall switch and it disconnects. So I always, whenever I do this, I leave a little flag on the end of the tape just to make it easier to peel off. Then I start pulling my fish tape through, which is gonna pull my wire through. And then we just keep pulling. Now you don't wanna be yanking on this because it'll be some resistance. Try to keep your pulls nice and smooth. Again, it's easier if you have a second person because that person can be fishing the fish tape up into the pipe or into the conduit for you. But since I don't have that, it's just going to be nice, smooth pulls so I get near the end. When you get near the end, you may have to give a good tug for the same reason we had to up top, which is that that conduit can get stuck. I'm sorry, the fish tape can get stuck as the conduit enters the box. So we get to the end here. I'm going to give it a couple of good tugs and... It ain't coming. So now we're going to try and investigate and see what's going on. So it's stuck somewhere. I'm assuming it's stuck around the end here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my light, which is going to be my phone because I didn't have a flashlight with me. And I'm going to shine some light up in there just so I can see. It's going to kind of knock out my other light, but it's mainly so I can see. I can see the end of it right there. So I push it in, pull down, and there we go. And there's our wire. You see the little flag on the end there that makes it easy to peel the wire off. So now that it's there, we can go ahead and grab our switch, get our stuff together, and get ready to make our connections. So now this is ran, we're gonna go ahead and unwrap our tape, and then take the wire off the end of the fish tape. If you bent that piece of the tape over, it should be easy to get off, and just matter of getting our wire up out of there. So if you look up here, you see our wire is up in the hole where the light fixture is. 
and it's going to run through the conduit in the ceiling to this light switch. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and disconnect the old switch. Now I know that the power is off, but don't do like me here and unwrap the tape. First thing you really want to do is get your electrical tester and test to make sure that the power is off. Make sure you hit the right breaker. But I cut the main off of the whole apartment so I know power is off. I'm just showing you that right there. Then we're going to remove our electrical tape. You're going to take our screwdriver. I like to use my impact because I'm lazy. And undo those two screws. Once we get those loose, we'll grab our needle nose pliers and go ahead and pull the wire off. Now that's off. We're just about ready to uh, put our new switch in. We're going to straighten these out because we don't even be bent. And that way we'll be able to wrap the wires from our new switch around those wires. So now we grab our new switch. It's really just a matter of matching our color. So we know white goes to white because that's our neutral. Now when we looked up top, we saw that the blue went to the light fixture. That means that blue is our switch power, which would be that when we hit the switch, that's what sends power up. So that blue has to go to the red because the red is our switched power. So we're going to take those and wrap that around there. And then um, since this was originally around the old switch, it's a little bit long, we're going to nip that end off to make sure this wire nut gets on there nice and tight. Otherwise what happens is you'll thread that wire nut on and you'll never catch your red wire because your red wire is so far down. So we're going to go ahead and just nip that little piece off right there and then go ahead and throw our wire nut on. And after we finish that, there's only two wires left. The black and the green. The black wire is the main power coming in to the switch. Well, this one is gray because I don't know who ran that, but it should be black if you follow regular color code. But we checked up in the fixture, we know that's our power coming down. So we're gonna wrap the black around that. Again, nip the end off because that original wire is too long and get our wire nut on there. Now the only wire left is your green. So in this case, since I'm dealing with conduit, or you might be dealing with BX, our box is ground. So all you have to do is get our green wire wrapped around a screw that's going to screw into that box. Then we'll be able to ground our switch here. Now if you're dealing with Romex, or that box is plastic, because uh, some newer properties have plastic boxes, and it'll be Romex, you'll have a ground. That ground will be a solid core non-insulated wire. And that'll be your ground. So now that all our connections are ready, we always make sure we tape our wire nuts. We're going to go ahead and push all this into the box. Now we need to try to get these wires to lay flat because this switch is thicker than a regular switch because it has uh, you know, electronics in there to handle the motion. So we're going to fold these up in here and then work it all up in there and then get the switch in there and screw it all in nice and tight. Be careful when you're doing this, you want to make sure that it all clears the edge of that box so you don't accidentally cut a wire when you're pushing the switch in. And you want to try to get those, switch, those wires to lay flat so that they're not pushing the switch out or that you're not accidentally smashing the wires together. Once we got all this up here, we'll go ahead and grab our Phillips head screwdriver or, our, or for me I always like grab an impact, which of course I didn't have right next to me. So I'm going to get that screw started a little bit, run over here and grab my tool. Then we go ahead and get this all tightened down, and we're set to move up to the fixture. So you see the wire we ran is still hanging out of the ceiling. Of course, we have to you know, cut that. We're going to cut it. We don't want to make it too long. We don't want to make it too short. Plus, we don't want to make it too short because we're not going to run a new wire. But we want to cut it just enough so that we're not trying to jam a bunch of wires back up into that box. Remember, we're adding a wire here so we're adding thickness to the bunch that's up here. And we don't want to add too much. We're going to take our wire strippers and strip out the end. If you don't have fancy wire strippers like mine, you can use your lineman pliers or needle nose pliers to do that. Now we're going to undo the white bundle here, which is our neutral bundle. And that's the wire we have to attach the white wire to. Now, there's a lot of wires in here. So we're going to take our white wire there. We're going to wrap it around. Then as usual, we grab our lineman pliers. We want to get this nice and tight. Remember, Always get it as tight as you can. If it's loose, it'll arc. Arcing causes heat, heat causes fires. You wanna get that nice and tight. Then we take the light from the white wire from the light fixture and twist that around there too. Same thing, get it as tight as we can. We're gonna nip off a little end there because our new wire was stripped a little bit too much and made a little bit of a long end. So we nip that part off. We grab a wire nut, get that on there nice and tight. Do a test pull on the wires. Everything seems fine. We'll go ahead and wrap our wire and wire it with electrical tape. 
I don't like the way the black wire looks. It doesn't look very secure. So while I'm up here, I'm going to go ahead and take care of that one too. I don't know who put this up here before, but when they taped it, they taped just the wire. They didn't tape the wire nut also. So when you see, when I undo this wire nut, there's no tape holding that on. And I'm able to just pull that wire right off. It's not good. So I'm going to undo it. I'm going to wrap it up properly. I'm going to put the wire nut on there. Again, give it a test pull, make sure nothing moves. And then I'm going to wrap wire and wire nut with electrical tape. Always wrap wire and wire nut with electrical tape. I'm also going to secure this black bundle up here too, just to make sure we don't have any problems. Now that all that's taken care of, here comes the fun part. Getting all the stuff back in the ceiling. So just like the light switch, we don't want to jam it up in there. I know my camera angle is a little off. I keep telling you, I need a cameraman. I need somebody to come hold the camera because I'm really just focused on getting the job done. So you want to get these up in there. Remember, all these light fixtures are the same. You line the screws up with the two holes, and then you twist, and they'll hold it in place. Then you're going to take your screwdriver and just tighten down the screw. Now, as you're putting it up there, be careful to make sure we flatten those wires up inside there so they're not bundling it up and getting pinched. So once that's done, it's time to test it. Now, if you remember, we programmed the switch to come on when you enter the room and to stay on as long as you're in the room. Then once it stops recognizing motion at a specific amount of time, when the timer runs out, it'll cut off. Usually about, you can set that as long as you want. I always try to set it as short as amount of time, which is about a minute. So it should cut off, right, there we go. So I'm gonna come back in the room, switch will come back on, and we're set. Everything works. I'm gonna put the cover back on the switch real quick. You can also turn the switch off and on by pressing the button, which I just did there. Now I'll leave the room, and it'll come back on again. All right, so again, thank you for checking out my video. Please check out my other videos. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can get notifications when my new videos come out. And I keep saying, please don't pay people to do this. Do it on your own. Save yourself some money. Thank you.